Hey peeps, welcome back to Project Anonymous. In today's video, we're going to do a beginner's guide to Inkscape and Ink Stitch. So stick around to see how we do it. video we've had people asking questions on this software and also just asking for a video on this software so we decided to put it all into one video and we're gonna take you from downloading and installing Inkscape and Inkstitch all the way to embroidery you ready to get started mm -hmm. let's do it and we're just gonna start at the Inkscape website which is inkscape.org go to download current version and then you're going to choose your operating system. We're using Mac. And your download will start. And finally, you'll drag the Inkscape application into your Applications folder. When you open up Inkscape for the first time, you'll get a notification warning you it's been downloaded from the internet. Hit OK. When you go to the Extensions tab, check and see if Inkstitch is there or not. Ours seems to be present, but some of the options are not available. But we'll fix that. So we'll go back into Safari to the Inkstitch website, which is inkstitch.org and we'll click on the Install Ink Stitch button. We're using a Mac, so we'll click on Mac OS. But you'll see a warning right here, and that's because the Ink Stitch developers did not uh, redo their licensing with Mac for Catalina and, and on, so there is a workaround we're gonna have to do, but all the instructions are actually on here on this website. We'll just take you through that. Now that we've downloaded our files for Ink Stitch, we'll extract the files and follow the directions on the website. This involves opening up Inkstitch, go to Preferences, System, and find where your user extensions folder is and open it. Then we'll simply drag and drop the files from our newly downloaded folder into that folder, like so. So we run Catalina on our Mac, so we're going to have to do some additional steps, and you may have to as well, depending on your computer and what you run. Uh, but from our understanding, the software developers of Inkstitch did not renew their Apple licensing to be able to create software for Catalina and beyond. So there are workarounds basically we have to do to get it to work appropriately. Mm -hmm. And they list it right here. It's on the website. Mm -hmm. So we're going to open up Terminal and copy the code from the website into Terminal. Now keep in mind, the website does say you may have to replace the user extension folder location. So you can find this back in Inkscape into user extension right there and verify that your address is the same as what's listed on the website. Ours was the same, so we just need to go back into Terminal, hit enter, and we're good to go. Now don't forget, restart Inkscape. Now we have Inkscape reopened. We're gonna do a simple little circle design to test 
ink stitch and we'll open up our extensions go to ink stitch and you can see everything is no longer grayed out so that's a good sign and we should see some stitches You know you installed InkStitch correctly if you can get into params without an error message. Yeah, if you get an error message telling you that it can't open because the system can't verify the software developer, then one of three things has happened. Either you didn't restart Inkscape, which you have to do to get it to work right, or you have to do it the process of copying the command over again, or three, your user extensions link is different than what is shown on the website, in which case you will just have to edit that command to match your user extensions address. Mm -hmm. It may be frustrating, but... It's what you, what you gotta, gotta do to do. get it to work. Hey, it's free still. Mm -hmm. That's always good. Yeah. So now that we have Inkscape and Inkstitch downloaded, there's one tip we'd like to give you, and that is defining your template work area so that when you go into future projects, you can have the same workspace available for you um, so you don't have to start from scratch each mm -hmm. time. What I'm talking about is the little boxed area in your workspace. You can define it to your uh, measurement of preference, whether that is in millimeters or inches, and to the size you want. So what we found very helpful when doing embroidery projects is making our work area the size of our hoops capacity. And that's four by four and five by seven are the two hoop sizes we typically use. So this is how you set up a template. Go to file and you go down to document properties. And from here, you can update your display units if you'd like. The height and width of your work area box and the units of measurement. And lastly, we like to check the checkerboard background just in case we're making a project with white thread. And finally, you can go to File, Save Template, and then you can name it the size of your hoop. Now you can see the next time you go into Inkscape, you can just open from a template and pull up your template. And your settings were saved. So now we're just going to take a simple design that we made and import into Inkscape to show all the features. Yeah, the basic tools mm -hmm. involved in how we design our products based off of an image. Mm -hmm. These are just the bare basics. Yep. We start by changing the name of layer one to our import layer. This will help us in the future when organizing our stitch design. Next, we import our design that we want to digitize. If you press control while you scale the image, it will keep the image from distorting in the X or Y axis. Now I'll create a new layer for my tracing that will go on top of the import pick. Before I do any work tracing out this image, I'm gonna go ahead and save it, just in case. Now I'm gonna use the Bezier tool to plot some nodes on the image that I can later shape into the bunny. See here I switch into the node view so that I can start adjusting these lines into shapes. You can see here, I'm just creating the bunny's eye with this simple circle, resizing it and putting it in place. Now you can see here, I'm going to hide the import pick layer so that I only see my sketch. Mm -hmm. 
Now I'll thicken up the outline of my sketch by adjusting the stroke. And this will give me the satin stitch edge that I want on my embroidery. Now I'm going to copy my design by hitting Command C and Command V off to the side. This is going to be, later be my top layer, which will be my satin stitch edge. And I'm using the layer currently on the workspace as my fill layer, where I'm just going to color things in. This will make sense in a minute. If I didn't do this, what would happen is my fill layer would stitch on top of my satin stitch around the edge, and I didn't want that. So now that we've finished our simple bunny design, it's time to convert our now created SVG file and turn it into a PES file that our embroidery machine can use using Ink Stitch. This is how you do it. Go to Extensions, Ink Stitch, and Params, and this will give you a basic preview of your embroidery project. And this is the menu where you can adjust the different aspects of your stitching. When you're done, hit apply and quit, and your settings will be saved. If you get an error when you try to open up your params, check your edges of your design. A lot of the times we've found in our designs that it will error out if one of our corners uh, crossed over itself like that. That makes sense? So I would suggest checking your corners, and this is especially prevalent in text. So look at that. Mm, text is so hard. It can be. The next feature we can take advantage of in Inkscape is the simulator or realistic preview. This feature will give you the most realistic view of what your embroidery project will look like. Finally, we're gonna to go to Extensions, Ink Stitch, Export, and Embroider to save our file as a PES file that our embroidery machine can read. We just exported our design into a PES file that we can now save directly onto our thumb drive and put that thumb drive onto our embroidery machine and mm -hmm. embroider our design, our custom design. Mm -hmm. You want to go do it? Yeah. All right, we'll go do it real quick. We just got it out of the hoop, and this is the official bunny design reveal. Yeah, it turned out really nice. And you saw we really just left the default settings in Ink Stitch, and it gave us a nice fill pattern and uh, satin stitch, and we didn't really have to change that much. Um, so if I were to give you one tip with working with Ink Stitch, is make sure when you're working in Inkscape to build your drawing in layers. You want to make sure that you put your fill pattern on the bottom and then work a new layer to do if you're going to put a satin stitch or an eyeball in our case, put that on a top layer because that's how ink skate and ink stitch work. It's based off of uh, layer order. So that's my biggest tip. Mm -hmm. So anyways, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please like it. Like it. Subscribe if you enjoy our content. Subscribe. And turn on those notifications so you get reminded every single time we post a video. Stay crafty. And be happy. Bye.